Right, hi everyone. So, another video. This one, <clears throat> using the chain rule, my favourite rule. I'm sure I've said that before. But yeah, it's, it is one of my favourite rules then. Um, this is going to open up so many gateways for your differentiation. I mean, at the moment you're differentiating stuff like 4x cubed. Oh no. <laughs> you know, this is, this is child's play now compared to what we're going to start doing. Okay, cat's play. All right, we're going to start differentiating stuff or by the end of this rule, you know, 4x cubed, uh, well, not that one yet, 4x cubed plus <coughs> sine to the 4, 3x squared plus 10, um, minus anything you want, 4x squared plus 1 to the power of 10, all to the power of 20. We'll be able to differentiate something like that. All right, it's such a massive step up to what we've done before. Now, <coughs> depending on what year you're watching this, we may or may not cover what sine and cos differentiate to. We will cover it in class if we haven't covered it as to why this is. But you do need to know for this video that sine x differentiates to cos x, okay? And that cos x differentiates to minus sine x. So we'll prove this in class, like I say, from first principles. It's a really good proof. But basic rule of thumb is this is called your differentiation table, what I've just drawn here. And we're going to have lots of things. We're going to have like tan x. We're going to prove that that goes to sec squared x. You may or may not know what sec is yet, but sec is 1 over cos. So this is the same as 1 over cos squared. We'll have uh, what does sec differentiate? Well, that goes to sec x tan x. You see this whole list of differentials, which we'll have to remember and prove from scratch. Easy way to remember uh, about minus signs is that anything beginning with a co has a minus in its differential. So cos will go to minus sign. Cosec, which you'll learn later, is 1 over cos, goes to minus cosec x cotex. Cotex, goes, that begins with co, goes to minus cosec squared, you see? Anything beginning with a co, it's going to go to a minus. So we just need to know that sine x differentiates to cos and cos x goes to minus sine x, right? Now, what is the chain rule? What is the chain rule and when do we use it? Well, we use it when we're differentiating functions within functions. Okay, so there are two definitions of the chain rule. The first one, and this one, we're not really going to use until you hit C4, really. But this is the principal definition of the chain rule. All right? I, I do actually have another video on proving this from first principles. There aren't any videos out there that I could find, so I made one. Um, I'm quite proud of that. And uh, yeah, it has got a fairly high hit rate for, for a maths video. <laughs> if that's what people are watching this by spare time. Um, but if you do want to watch it, just, just look at it, like proof of the chain rule. And... Uh, see where that came from because there's actually some quite complex maths behind that but if you know how to do first principles you should be able to follow what's going on okay now these things here are not fractions they are not fractions but they behave like fractions so can you see that dy by dx is split into there's your dy there's your dx and the dt's kind of cancel in big quotation marks right these dt dt cancels like that okay so you can see that the object hasn't changed so what you're doing in a sense is introducing a third variable so you've got y you've got x but now you've got t as well so this links to what's called parametric form so parametric form means adding another variable but we will talk about that later when you go into c4 really and implicit differentiation within C4 and parametrics and all that kind of stuff. But what I think illustrates it most effectively is the second version. So the second version says, if y is f of g of x, you see what I mean by a function within a function? This g of x is a function within the function of f of x. Now that sounds quite complicated or quite confusing, but it's not really. Because if you said y was, say, 2x all cubed, that is a function within a function, isn't it? And the skill behind the chain rule is recognizing what is g and what is f. 
So g, to me, clearly, is the function within the function f, which is all cubed, okay? So f must be the all cubed bit, whatever you put in there is all cubed, and g of x must be the function inside. Let's do that another one. So like if we had sine 3x plus 1, well, f must be the sine, right? So f is kind of the outside uh, outside operator, isn't it? So the, you're working outside in. f is the stuff on the outside. Uh, so your f is your sine x, and your g is the function within that sine x. So g must be your 3x plus 1. Now we're saying if y is fg of x, this will go then, this will differentiate to f dash of gx times by g dash of x. And this is what I need you to remember at all times when differentiating using the chain rule. If you're not sure and you're just interested in how these two rules interconnect, well, they interconnect really well. Um, so before we go on to any examples, it is really, you know, sorry if this video goes on a little bit longer than it should, but this is the bedrock to all of your differentiation. And differentiation in C3 is like 60% of the module. So it's very important that you understand how to recognize chain rule. And when we talk about it, product rule and quotient rule. Okay, so how do these two link just for interest purposes? So first one says dy by dx is dy by dt times dt by dx. And like I say, there's a big proof of that in another video if you're interested. We can relate this second one to that perfectly. So if we say, so we know that let y be fg of x, that's what our y is, that's our starting point. So here, t, the extra variable t, must be g of x, right? And therefore, if we're trying to fill in this dt by dx bit in the formula, dt by dx must be the differential of g, so g prime x, okay? And if t is g of x, then, starting from here, y must be f of, well, t. And again, we need dy by dt. So dy by dt must be the differential of f with respect to t. But remember that t is actually g of x. So this is g dash g of x. Put them together, link these two together. We get dy by dx is our <coughs> dy by dt. So that's here, f dash of g of x. And our dt by dx, which is here. So there's our g dash of x. So you can see that they are exactly the same. Now that's that theory. That's a lot of theory. But let's see how we cope with the reality of it. So if I've got to find dy by dx when y is cos 3x plus 2, right? Let's do that one. Okay. So again, like I say, if we always quote the chain rule. So we know what we're doing. So dy by dx is f dash. Always do the f dash first. G dash of x. Okay, now other classes are probably going to do the dy by dx, is dy by dt, dt by dx. But I think that's actually very confusing when you get functions within functions within functions, like inception, you know? A dream within a dream within a dream. So let's go for this way. We need to recognize what's f and what's g. Well, clearly, g is the function inside the function, isn't it? And cos must be f. So we can literally, now we've recognized that, follow our ingredients. So the first step is f dash. Now cos, as we know, is now begins, it begins with co, is minus sine. We know that goes to, so cos x goes to minus sine x. So there's our f dash. We've differentiated our f part. And it tells us that g of x stays in there. So that stays. And now we times it by the differential of g. And 3x plus 2 differentiates to 3. So this would give us minus 3 sine 3x plus 2. Nice. Next. So, quote our formula again. So y is f g of x. 
So dy by dx is f dash g of x, g dash of x. Okay? So here we go. We've got z. Again, what's the f and what's the g? If you can recognize what, what, if this is a chain rule problem or not. So g of x is the inside function. And f must be this x to the 5. g of x is 3x squared plus 4. And then f saying raise everything to the power of 5. And once we recognize that, remember it's not always going to be y, so this is z this time, dz by x, we can start working the problem and filling in this formula. So if f is x to the power of 5, f dash must be 5 x to the 4, yeah? So 5 x to the 4. And it tells us that g of x stays inside. Can you see that? And then we times it by g dash of x. So 3x squared plus 4 differentiated goes to 6x. Clean that up a bit. So 30x, 3x squared plus 4 to the 4. Okay, the key is recognizing what's f, what's recognizing, uh, recognizing what's g. Please work along with these videos. Don't just sit passively watching this because you will not follow it um, unless you try them with me. And it's like I say, this is this is going to set up your A2 year. So just put the time in now whilst you can. Now, again, it looks like a chain rule because I've got a function within a function sign, but whoa. What's this cubed about outside here? Now, I just quickly write my uh, chain rule again. So if y is f g of x, we know that dy by dx is f dash g of x, g dash of x. I'm not going to write that anymore after this because we now should get it in our heads. We need to recognize, though, what this cubed means on the outside of sine. Actually, f is sine 2g big brackets cubed the whole thing is cubed like when you would insert something into your calculator okay you <coughs> you must put powers on the outside of big brackets when you're dealing with trig because otherwise you just can't see what the layering of the functions are okay so big note to yourself trig functions when differentiating trig functions, put power in big brackets. So square brackets. Make that note to yourself. Make it really clear. Get it in your head that you have to put that power on the outside. So now what's f and what's g? Can you see we've got kind of a function within a function within a function? We've got a 2g within sine x, and we've got the sine x within the cubed again. So we'll just work inside out. It's nothing to be scared of. You just layer and layer and layer. So let's have a go. So df by dg equals, what's f? Well, f at the moment is the cubed bit, and g is the sine 2g bit. So normal stuff. If you have x cubed, that f is x cubed, right? That goes to 3x, well, your g of x. Remember, the g of x stays on the inside squared the power came down and a minus one from the power that's that sorted and then it tells me to differentiate our g but our g is another chain rule problem do you see so what's the f and what's the g this time because you have a function within a function so this must be your f and this must be your g now for this g dash of x section so, as we know, f, like sine x, goes to cos x. So cos, that's our f dash bit, and the 2g stays, remember, our g of x. And then we multiply it all by the differential of our g, which is 2. Okay? So 6 sine squared 2g times by cos 2g is our dy by dx, and we box that. That one, again, try that out. Make sure you're following that, all right? Okay, last example. So we've got another trig function. 
We see that there's a power there. Don't like that. We always write the big square brackets on the outside. And now we can look at this properly. I said I wouldn't write it again, but I do think you should write it. It just reminds you, but you know, when you get really good at this, you don't even think about the F and Gs. You just kind of see it. You just see that's a function within a function. So what's the F? Well, the F must be the X to the four. Remember, we're working inside out. And the G of X must be the thing in the middle, the thing on the inside. So let's go for it. DY by DX equals, so F dash, F is X to the four. So this goes four X to the three. Bring the power down and subtract one from the power. And it tells us g of x stays in the middle. And now we need to times it by g dash of x. But like before, we can see that g is actually composed of a function within a function as well. So now we've got our kind of f and our g of x here. So cos, as we know, cos x, the f bit, goes to minus sine x. So minus sine. There's our f dash, and the g of x stays in there. And now we need to differentiate our g, this bit here, which we know goes to ax. OK? So clean this up. dy by dx is now minus. There's the minus. 8 times 4 is 32x cos 4x squared plus 3. Don't really need that bracket anymore. And this is all to the cubed. And we've got our sine 4x squared plus 3. And we can box that. And there's our final answer, OK? Like I say, go through this video again if you're not sure. It's very important that you, that you understand what's going on here. Practice, talk to people, get help, do it with your mates. Um, if you get this, then differentiation will be no problem for you uh, later on. Okay? All the best. Cheers.